So I'm the CEO of the Combat Anti-Semitism Movement. We are a global coalition of organizations, individuals and uh, decision makers that fight anti-Semitism. Individuals that uh, we bring together um, to really show uni a united front against anti-Semitism and uh, hatred. Are you I'm a Belgian. What gives people who consider themselves liberal the justification to go ahead, go ahead and, and tear down evidence of someone else's uh, facts? It's very hard for me to get in the heads of those that try to justify such hatred, such atrocities. So I can't understand that besides just saying this is Jew hatred mm. from day one and the hate Jews, they hate everything that is Jewish, including the state of Israel. How does this influence EU policy vis-a-vis -vis the Middle East? So the, it's a very complicated question because we're in the middle of, of a, a conflict and a war that it's happening right now. Mm. The leadership in Europe agrees that Israel has the right to defend itself, definitely. Mm -hmm. The problem is not the leadership at this stage, it's really what's happening on the street and the pressure of coming from the streets. So from the street we see massive demonstrations supporting the Palestinian people, and these demonstrations create a lot of pressure to our politics to act differently. But even after 75 days, we still don't see in Europe a massive political uh, movement uh, stopping Israel from defending itself and eradicating Hamas. So I think that even in Europe, after seeing October 7, and especially in Europe, mm -hmm. where the Holocaust happened and they see a pogrom against Jews, mm -hmm. right now we have the politician with us, but we don't have the streets. The street, we lost it completely. Mm -hmm. um, it's been really hard for the Jewish community, even harder than the United States, because they are small. Mm -hmm. In the United States, at least you have a structure, you have the community security mm -hmm. system that is helping the communities, which we don't have in every Jewish uh, in every city in Europe, so this is really the big problem that we see these days. Mm -hmm. How about policing of anti-Semitic actions in uh, Jewish areas? You might say that these, these desecrations here, uh, because the posters are in a, in a particular area and it has such so close proximity to the mosque down the road, uh, that the police may have, uh, should, should be uh, motivated to prosecute people who get caught tearing or vandalizing these things. Are they? They are not. We've seen a lot of pressure put on those that have been filmed and been seen. And I think the world doesn't want to see that. When you have a kidnapped kid of 10 months old that has been uh, also as an hostage for 75 days and someone take the picture out, the world doesn't accept that. So what we see is a really a movement to protect these posters by having cameras, by filling them. And we see a lot of people losing their job by paying a heavy price, by vandalizing such an honest, an honest human life yeah. that needs to be liberated. Mm -hmm. So I think the really the system is not about the police; it's about name it and shame it. Well, that's like doxing, though, isn't it? We don't like doxing necessarily if it's done to us. I don't think it's about doxing or done to us. I think it's really about the fact that there are things that are not acceptable in our society mm -hmm. that really need, we shouldn't accept, and these people need to pay a price. Now, the police will not uh, give them a heavy price; they will just maybe pay a, a small fee. But paying the price would mean losing your job not being accepted in your environment and make sure that the, the, what you committed will be considered as a crime by the society, not especially by the police, but the society shouldn't accept that. Uh, does That's question I need to Okay, uh, you're Israeli now. I'm, I'm an Israeli now, no, I know I'm in Los Angeles now. Okay. Oh, oh, but where are you based? No, I'm uh, living in, uh, in Israel, in Tel Aviv. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So what are your thoughts about the way that Israel is being uh, maligned, uh, defamed through the uh, press depiction? I know Euronews may be based in Brussels, uh, but now as, uh, as, as an Israeli person, you know, traveling, uh, you, you uh, travel on uh, Israeli uh, planes and, and you're representing something that's connected with Israel. What do you think about the way that the media is depicting uh, Israel and Israeli people? So I've been working in the media field for years, so I'm not surprised by anything that I see in this conflict or previous conflict. I know that the media is biased totally. I know the media is looking for scoop, for stories, and I know that Israel is not providing what the media wants because we're fighting a digital uh, warfare that is very complicated that doesn't provide the visuals that, we, that the media needs. And we don't feed the media because it's not just a media war. It's a real war that we, we consider as a real war. Now, it's important to understand the Palestinians are working toward the media war only. Mm -hmm. While in Israel, we're working about education, building the street, big, building our countries, defending our citizens, mm -hmm. and the media goes after. So this is why we lost the war, because we cannot, as a society, put the media as a first goal. We cannot lie, and on the other side, we have people lying, creating stories, fake news, mm -hmm. or whatever is needed to get the headlines against Israel. So we, it's not new for us. We know 
that we pay a price of our honesty and credibility and we will continue to pay this price because we are not ready to play the game of the media, neither the game of the Palestinians.